Uh, Taylor Twalman, 30 caps uh, for the United States men's senior soccer team. Fantastic work on ESPN. English Premier League is back tomorrow. Alfonso Davies and Bayern Munich just won another Bundesliga title. MLS schedule hopefully comes out soon. Taylor, there are so many things we want to talk about. Major League Baseball, Taylor, what the hell is going on with Major League Baseball? <laughs> what the hell is going on? You two laughed at me, too. You two laughed at me. What was it, three weeks ago that I said uh, baseball would screw it up somehow? I laughed. One of us yeah, laughed, I laughed at you. I One laughed. of us laughed at you. <laughs> How does it feel to be right, though? <laughs> Uh, well, it's an everyday occurrence, obviously. So it's not that, you know, it's not too, it's not that hard with me. Um, uh, truth, truth be told, this is, it's remarkable, isn't it? Global pandemic, uh, and these two parties want to, uh, bicker over future pay, future play. The announcers have the guts to announce that they signed a billion dollar television deal with Turner Sports. Three billion. This, and yet Three billion. Rick, Three Think billion. Of, right. There you go. Three billion. Um, and yet, you know, Ricketts want to tell me that the <laughs> that the Major League Baseball clubs aren't cash cows. Yeah. OK, sure. The Chicago Cubs don't bring in a lot of cash. It's just <laughs> it, it's uh, it's a farce. The entire thing's a farce to me. Um, baseball has been dying for a while. People don't understand that. Uh, take the postseason and World Series out of the equation. And you guys know this as good as as good as anyone. The fact is. Their weekly ratings on television, other than within your own market, they don't resonate. Major League Soccer outrates you on ESPN when you're on Wednesday Night Baseball and, and Monday Night Baseball. So uh, it's just remarkable to me. The global pandemic and both parties want to have, uh, you know, throw their toys out of the sandbox and act like we care. Uh, we wanted to give you your moment in the sun after uh, the last conversation that we had with you. So <laughs> there is there is the moment in the sun you were right. We'll see what happens with baseball. But you mentioned MLS. Uh, let's talk about it. What do, you, what do you make of the World Cup format of the MLS return to play? I mean, I love the idea. I love the concept. It's always difficult to try to come up with a World Cup-style tournament when you have 26 teams. And, and obviously the format with six teams in Group A is a little difficult for me to comprehend how the top two out of the group, that group go through, you know, mathematically, they have less of a probability to advance. But, uh, you know, you're coming up with the concept. Your return to play is on point. Uh, the NBA is dragging their feet a little bit. So now it looks like you're going to have the entire month of July to yourselves uh, in the United States and Canada. And, guys, this is a real opportunity for them to have eyeballs that they wouldn't have. Now, keep, mind you, yes, the Premier League returns tomorrow, but that's going to be over by the time Major League Soccer comes around. So they really do have an opportunity for a ton of eyeballs that they would have never gotten. Uh, they're going to be on our network here at ESPN, front and center, which would have never happened if Major League Baseball and the NBA were going on at the same time. So there's a real opportunity here. I love the concept. I just think the competitive integrity of Group A to get into the weeds, it's off to me because there's six teams in Group A You've got to say that the top three go through, so then it evens itself out with the rest of the groups. But it is what it is because 26 teams makes an uneven tournament, no matter how you slice it. Taylor Twalman, ESPN, here on Tim and Sid. Taylor, you're you're bang on in terms of the of the lack of other soccer really in the ether. EPL will be done. The only thing really is going to be Champions League in August, which sounds like it's going to be in Portugal, and the Europa League is going to be in Germany. Other than that. Uh, MLS are going to have the runway all to themselves. Um, the schedule here, Taylor, what are you hearing? Like when, when, when do we actually see dates? When do I get to know when El Trafico happens? Like when, when do we know this information? Uh, when the television partners, uh, get their ducks in a row is the most politically correct way I could say it. <laughs> um, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, right. what that means you guys can figure it out, gotcha. Um, gotcha. but that's all we've heard. So right. put, to put it this way, at one point, I thought I was calling and going to be working 42 games. It then was at 22. Now it's at 32. You follow where I'm going. Yeah. Um, that's where this is. Um, but I'll tell you right now. It, may, it makes sense, staff, too. It does make sense, Taylor, because they're going to want to see what else is played at that time before they make that schedule, right? Like if, if basketball was going well, to be back yeah. or baseball was there. They want to know. No, I mean, we, I, I mean, I'll speak for ESPN. ESPN's yeah. committed to the tournament, so it actually has nothing to do with us. I'll oh. just leave it at that. 
Hmm. All right. So does that mean, Taylor, does that mean you're going and we'll be quarantined, or are you calling off a monitor from Bristol or wherever you are? Well, it depends on how we want to uh, embrace this. It also depends on how many games. If, if, we're, if ESPN's going to broadcast on their linear network 40-some-odd games, it behooves me to be in Connecticut because that allows me – to be fresh for the call and whatnot. If I'm in Orlando, I cannot be in the booth. I would have to be on the field, and John Champion would be in whatever kind of booth they have set up. The other aspect is we have plans of studio coverage around it, which we never do because if I'm in Connecticut, it allows us the access to your studio to have halftime shows and all of that. So that's the stuff we're going through. Um, I think it's more beneficial for me to be in Connecticut Uh, just because the quarantine is going to be so stiff. I'm not going to get the access that I normally get. And the same kind of access I get in Orlando, guys, I would get in the studio. And in the studio in Connecticut, I can actually look and have a conversation where in Orlando I'll be on the field with the players. Taylor Twelman of ESPN here on Tim and Sid. Um, all right, let's 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 talk about the English Premier League here. And there there's been I, I guess it's the league that's been talked about the most, Taylor, in terms of a return to play. There was a lot of discussion here. Do you let fans in? Do you do you move Liverpool and Everton to a neutral site? Do you do a do you, I mean what it seems like there was a lot of consternation, but at the end of the day, no one should be really surprised that the most lucrative financial sports league on earth miraculously found a way back on the field, right? Like this was I, I always believed this was an inevitability. Oh, it has to. I mean, think about it. If it didn't, they had to write a check. They had to write checks up to one point three billion dollars just for this year. So there, there's your answer. Absolutely. Now, I, I find it hysterical that English Premier League fans, particularly the English fans, are upset that these games are going to be played without fans. Like, I, I'm sorry, but United Kingdom was hit pretty hard with COVID-19. So in judging with how Germany covered it and how transparent they were, how pragmatic they were and proactive, all those buzzwords you want to use, then absolutely, the competition still stands. Now, no fans? Uh, that takes away from your whole field, whole field advantage, and we've seen that in the in the Bundesliga so far, and that's been the common denominator. When I talk to technical directors over there, even players over there, is that the home field advantage is completely gone, except for Bayern Munich, right? Wherever they play, there's no pressure on them whatsoever because they're operating at a completely different level than everybody else. Correct. Uh, but this is going to be interesting how England uh, and how the league shakes up, and 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 what turns out with Champions League spots. You know, all of that, you're, you're going to see teams that we thought were a given and actually come back down to the middle of the pack because that home field advantage is completely gone. Taylor Twelman, ESPN, host of Banter, uh, also joining us here on Tim and Sid. Before we let you go, you mentioned Bayern Munich a couple times. Uh, they won the Bundesliga or clinched the Bundesliga today. Uh, Alfonso Davies, though he received a red card in that game, uh, is a Bundesliga champion for the second time up here in Canada. It's pretty big news. He's also player of the month for May, Bundesliga rookie of the month, or excuse me, Bayern Munich's player of the month for May, and the Bundesliga rookie of the month for May. My co-host called him the best left back in the world. How close is he to actually getting that distinction? I think you're going to have that conversation for real over the next 8 to 12 months. Because with the amount of injuries that they had and how they had to change the lineup, David Alaba had to play center back and move Davies to left back, gave him an opportunity to grow into the spot. He completely made the team different, more dynamic, uh, free-flowing. Um, obviously, we know about the athleticism, but I think it's underrated his ability to whip in balls in the final third um, he just makes them a, li- a, a different animal. You know, Kimmich coming into the middle, him not playing right back helps, but that's all because Davies is on the field. I believe he's in the top five right now, uh, currently, as we speak, even if we're in a global pandemic. But I think over the next eight to 12 months, uh, if he continuously plays regularly for Bayern Munich, I think he's in the conversation for best left back in the world. And I honestly don't think that's that outrageous for anyone that's paid attention over the last six to eight weeks and even before the pandemic. But I mean, I'm, I'm open to the debate, you know, Jordi Alba, Marcelo, Andrew Robertson, Liverpool, I'll hear them all. I, I, I get it. 
I just think this kid is a gazelle, and I've never seen anything like it at the left back position. He is, because today I know Taylor. I don't know if you saw the stat, and it's it, it's still he incredible. Twenty two miles an hour. He was as fast as my golf cart. F- <laughs> <laughs> Without the limiter. At your, at your at Taylor Twelman's peak, how how many miles per hour did you go? If Alfonso Davis can go twenty two miles per hour, how fast could Taylor Twelman go? Two point two. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry one listen listen i i earned my paycheck in about 10 yards um alfonso my my hamstrings would have ripped off if i was trying to chase alfonso davies come on alfonso man davies could run faster with one leg than i could you weren't jan kohler like you could run faster <laughs> no. than that Kohler like, reference shut up jan like. kohler in the czech yeah. republic well, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah, you were, okay. you were a faster was, player. My head than that. was like a baby. <laughs> my head was like a baby beluga, like Jan Kohler, but not, not really. I was faster than Jan Kohler. I honestly, though, like it, we we talk about the stats and all that about the speed. Fine, no problem. But he's also a footballer. He's a soccer player. Yeah. You know, he's got yeah. the technical ability. He's good with his left foot, and so it's just understated because he's so fast, or as Thomas Mueller calls him, the road runner. Beep beep. But um, it, it's a different level. But he's he's playing into himself and learning the position tactically, and that's the best part about watching Alfonso Davies. And credit to Byron Munich rolling the dice. But oh. I don't think you're rolling the dice if a guy runs 22 miles an hour. Like you're not really rolling the dice and saying to a guy, "Well, all right, we'll find a way to put you on the field." Really, really, he's faster than everyone in the world. I mean, in all seriousness, Alfonso Davies versus Mbappe, who wins? I'm not totally sure Davies. I know that answer. It's Davies. And yeah. Mbappe is, I'm, I'm, and you're talking to two huge Kylian Mbappe fans. Huge. Yeah. But it's Davies. Davies, he has a motor that's better than Mbappe. Yeah. No, and, that, and that's why I think eight to 12 months from now, I don't think it's as <laughs> ludicrous as people think it is now that he's the best left back in the world. By the way, I'm I'm also a huge fan of Jan Kohler's forehead. All right, so I'm just gonna say that, <laughs> oh, and don't it's, and don't it's Google a, it and me. What are you talking about? <laughs> and yeah, it's it's at least a five head, and so is mine. That's why I'm saying the same thing. I think Sixero looked at a picture of me and then thought Jan Kohler. It's not true, but it, it, there's a correlation. There is yeah. a correlation. Uh, Taylor, before we let you start, you head, if you two headbutted each other, there'd be a Big Bang Theory. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> there what? There what? There what? Um, Quickly, quickly. Apparently, if you score a goal or subbed in in the Premier League starting tomorrow, you get to pick your own entry song. What? Oh, yes. what, what if, if if Taylor Twelman could pick a song after he scored a goal, what would the track have been? Krista Berg, Lady in Red. <laughs> of course it would be. Why wouldn't it be? Dancing with me. <laughs> cheek to cheek. You guys, <laughs> you guys were laughing. Yeah. I listened to Krista Berg lady in red before every no that's not your game, game tape yes it is yes it is just Fact lady in red a- or or other krista berg songs oh no no whoa 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 whoa, whoa. we're not going all in on krista berg here guys it's wow. lady in red only oh, no. lady in red here you no, give no, us no, some, no, no, no. Not- taylor can you give us some bars then you gotta prove it to us can you give us some bars yeah. No, not at all. Um, <laughs> I, I have to be. I have to be in the moment. It's not a pregame song. Uh, no offense to you guys, but pregame's a little different than Tim and Sid. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's no doubt about it. I want I want to score a goal. We win two one, and I want Lady in Red blaring in that stadium and having everyone at home wonder what the hell is he doing. <laughs> yep, I, uh... it's me. I uh, I googled I, I googled Chris DeBerg. Uh, his signature song "Lady in Red" has been repeatedly voted one of the public's most disliked songs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and by the way, so is Taylor Twalman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we enjoy it uh, whenever you come on here. Appreciate you coming back, uh, taking the victory lap on Major League Baseball, and talking a little soccer with us.